certain types of social gatherings are more likely to cause COVID outbreaks than others, and churches just so happen to be one of the major focal points of such outbreaks, both in raw statistical fact and just in the hypothetical logistics of congregating all at once for hours at a time, sitting next to people from different households, singing, and possibly eating and drinking together. This seems pretty obvious on its face, even if we didn't have the stats. These were the basic facts that informed the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to uphold first a California rule and then a Nevada rule, both of which imposed restrictions not just on religious gatherings, but on gatherings which function in similar ways, such as lectures, concerts, and movie theaters. This was done to reduce the spread of coronavirus during peak infection periods. Both of these Supreme Court decisions were 5-4 rulings in favor of the states, with the conservative justices dissenting. They argued that because businesses like pharmacies and florists were allowed to remain open, but churches were not, the states were therefore discriminating against churches. In the California case, writing in dissent, Justice Kavanaugh wrote, The basic constitutional problem is that comparable secular businesses are not subject to a 25% occupancy cap, including factories, offices, supermarkets, restaurants, retail stores, pharmacies, shopping malls, pet grooming shops, bookstores, florists, hair salons, and cannabis dispensaries. The problem, as you may have noticed, is that the comparable secular businesses he cites are not actually comparable to church services. Businesses that are comparable, such as lectures, concerts, and movie theaters, were restricted in similar ways, sometimes even more so than churches. Indeed, in this particular case, Chief Justice John Roberts said exactly this, implicitly criticizing Kavanaugh's dissent. As Roberts wrote in the majority opinion, similar or more severe restrictions apply to comparable secular gatherings, including lectures, concerts, movie showings, spectator sports, and theatrical performances, where large groups of people gather in close proximity for extended periods of time, and the order exempts or treats more leniently only dissimilar activities, such as operating grocery stores, banks, and laundromats, in which people neither congregate in large groups nor remain in close proximity for extended periods. Frankly, this seems pretty obvious when you lay it out. Gatherings that are actually similar to religious gatherings were treated in similar ways, if not worse. This is clearly not anti-religious discrimination. Unfortunately, that was then, this is now. Now that the court has a decisive conservative majority, and despite the rather clear rebuke of the previous dissenting opinions, the conservative justices recently voted in a 5-4 decision to strike down a similar set of restrictions in New York, on the same misleading basis as their previous dissent, comparing church services to retail stores, and ignoring the fact that businesses whose gatherings are actually comparable to church services were given similar, if not even more restrictive, treatment. This included casinos, bowling alleys, and movie theaters. In fact, just to hammer home how not discriminated against churches in New York were in this case, in the designated red zones of the state where the coronavirus risk is highest, the rule was that no more than 10 people may attend religious services. And in less dangerous orange zones, attendance was capped at 25. In contrast, in both red and orange zones, the state had ordered the complete shutdown of casinos, bowling alleys, arcades, movie theaters, and fitness centers. Religious organizations were allowed to remain open with limited capacity, but other businesses with comparable gatherings had to close down completely. What this means is that, in New York, religious gatherings were already subject to fewer restrictions than comparable secular gatherings. And even then, religious groups still cried discrimination. That is insane, and the Supreme Court has now upheld this insane claim by choosing to ignore the facts. Now, the free exercise of religion is certainly more important than the free exercise of movie-going, but this was already granted in the more lenient restrictions on religious gatherings. This case should have been laughed out of court, but apparently, being treated better than your neighbor is discrimination, against you.